The Great Builders Pack just released, and I wanted to, in the spirit of building great things, build a tier list or at least a top three for the must-have mods for your Civ 6 game. I want to cover some of the more known mods as well as some of the less known mods. So I want to have a fair, well-covered list that kind of gets the gist of enhancing your Civ 6 experience, including UI features as well as some new additions to the base game roster. So with that said, let's get into it, talk about some of the better additions, I think because there are a lot of Civ mods to sort through. And I think doing the work for you guys, while it does take a bit to scroll through and review all of the different mods I have installed, it is definitely a worthwhile experience to get to know um, the mods on the workshop and the different developers that put them out. Despite all of the achievements that Civ 6 has made in terms of renovating the district system and adding new features with it being adjacency bonuses and just making cities more interactive, one of the big gripes I think I still have with Civ 6 is that when you go from the medieval and renaissance eras, when you have these beautiful city centers that incorporate different cultures from South America to Africa to Europe and really are representative of a different unique cultural, I think, distinction between empires, the city centers are really the place where you mark that it is the foundation of a city. When you go from the industrial and then onto the later contemporary eras, the state of the city center becomes very, very dire. It is this brutalist, boring hellscape. Um, and while there are some things to be said about brutalist architecture, and I think the future aesthetics for city centers looks fine, it makes all of these cities look completely the same. There are very little distinctions between empires. And one of these mods that I want to recommend, Luigi City Styles, completely revamps this. The first big distinction that Luigi does as opposed to base game Civ is that he revamps the city center by adding new assets. For example, Spain has new buildings that represent its Renaissance era featuring colonization and references to that. Some of the Norwegian cities and the just general Scandinavian cultures and civs like Sweden have more detailed and dedicated, less, I think, generically European, I should say, city centers that focus more on just a northern aesthetic or they represent more of the architecture of that region as opposed to just a bland generalization. Uh, the same goes for the classical era Mongolian and I guess the general steppe nomad people like Scythia, like Mongolia, um, and even China gets its own more uniquely themed buildings. I think Civ 6 at least had a good covering for the base game Civ of China, but there is a better sense of representation there with the different city styles. So I think when it comes to covering the various cultures that Civ has to offer, this just does a much better job at keeping it into um, later eras and making sure your culture and empire is, again, distinct from the others, which is a big thing for RP players and just people that like to take the time to look at the map to see how far their empire has come, because I think that is one big um, hallmark of Civ, just seeing how you can grow your empire and looking over your own achievements and not just the AIs. In base Civ 6, one of the nice things about monuments is that they still took the time to make cultural references to them. While they are not wholly distinct, there are some tweaks here and there to add visual flair and distinction. But Luigi again takes that a step farther by adding unique monuments for each culture, um, or at least regions for specific cultures, because it's hard to pin down one monument and make one for every single empire. But I think he does a good job at um, doing the lion's share and distributing a fair amount of differently. Um, visually flavorful uh, monuments and additions, such as monuments for the Bantu, uh, monuments for Patagonians, even with the Inca and the Mapuche, and monuments for some of the lesser known civs, which I thought was impressive too, um, because there are, again, going to be less references architecturally for them, uh, for cultures like the Cree. So that's really cool to see. And I think just in general, this is not going to be a huge gameplay enhancement or add any new mechanics, but it adds more to your cities. And for that, I just think there are not too many mods out there that add more visual distinctions without completely overhauling or adding new districts, and I really like that. Again, there is an option to do that if you are so inclined. One little other tidbit is that there are canal additions and distinctions too, so in the words of Todd Howard, uh, it just works like that. So if you are into the uh, canal craziness and the hype um, that plagued early Gathering Storm with canals and the relevancy, if you're still chasing that dragon, so to say, um, it is in the uh, mod pack, so it is there for you if you'd like to uh, download it in the description. 
One of the most annoying systems, and I think this is one of the few areas where Civ 5 actually had a better system in the base game than uh, Civ 6, which is saying something because Civ 5's base religion system was not much. Gods and Kings expanded on it uh, quite a great deal. And even then, I would say that system is far better than what we have in Civ 6, because when it comes to planning and pacing, just in terms of um, game lag alone and just like frames, I've had some incredible trouble with missionary and apostle spam. And holy crap, when you are in the medieval era and the Renaissance era, it is one of the most pivotal times to make sure your district planning, um, if you're getting that damn industrial zone adjacency up, if you are slowly developing your empire, you do not have time when you are placing down all of those pins to deal with missionary spam, especially if you just got a religion late into the game and someone like Saladin decides to spam just because of his agenda, um, all of his missionaries and apostles onto you. It is completely insane. And thankfully, this mod, the Religion Expanded mod by Pokio, adds a great deal of customization to religion. One of the big reasons that this mod is a must if you are a more passive player like me when it comes to city building and going for religion, you don't necessarily, depending on your start conditions and what empire you pick, have that much time to dedicate in the ancient era or classical era towards a holy site and that ends up sniping um, the religions there are only like six to eight depending on your map size thankfully this mod adds at least with the base game you can go further if you have gathering storm and a unique um, historical religion mod the base game provides 12 religions with those additions you have a max of 16 religions so there is a lot you can do furthermore there are new worship buildings if you don't manage to snag some of them, perhaps if you're playing with more players. Um, this is to account for that. You have things like the Deirasar, the Kandi, the Serapeum. In general, they pay more homage to Eastern religions, which I don't think base game Civ 6 does too much, even with Gathering Storm and Rise and Fall. There are things like the Beth Manda, the Basilica. So they provide faith. They provide new gameplay by adding slots for relics and other things. So it adds more play styles and more diversity to already pre-existing civs like the Kume or civs that might not even consider religion like Bolivia with their production and food bonuses if you want to go um, even crazier with things like the Hacienda. So many more gameplay styles are open due to this mod and I heavily appreciate that. And that's not even including new pantheons and new follower beliefs. So you can get crazy with things like Chthonic Cult. You can get things like Tundra Spirits, which make it easier for... Um, nations like Canada and Russia uh, to get in the tundra and get more invested. So there are a lot of things here that just open up more gameplay styles. And I like that it is not actively aggressive by like changing any core gameplay mechanics. It expands onto existing gameplay mechanics. So if that is a great for you, if you don't necessarily trust mods and gameplay developers to add new features um, wholly by themselves that don't necessarily have any justification being in the base Civ 6 game, by all means, this mod, I think, is for you. Now, this would not be a very good mod list without paying some kind of attention and adding an honorable mentions list to mods like Remove Strategic Resources, um, to mods like Sucretax Oceans. I think there are a lot of good smaller mods out there that don't renovate features, that don't add new uh, leaders that are completely fair uh, when it comes to just adding more flavor and immersion. So remove strategic resources, absolutely necessary. I don't even think it's negotiable. It's almost mandatory as soon as you get the um, base game, even if you go further with expansions like Gathering Storm, because they had not added any options to remove strategic resources. It is completely insane that it's not there. But if you want to save a headache and you cannot stand iron uh, jeopardizing a plus six campus spot like I can, then please, by all means, if that's like a 12, plus 12 too, um, if you get that double adjacency bonus, then by all means, go ahead and go forward with the strategic resource removal mod. And also, please consider checking out Sucretax Oceans mod. It adds new resources. It uh, revamps the tile set for the oceans. And it, in general, makes playing oceans and coastal city starts more entertaining. One other less intrusive mod and add-on that you might want to consider that does not interfere too much with your overall Civ 6 gameplay experience is the Colorized Historic Moments mod. I think if you didn't like the bland Historic Moments and their implementation in Civ 6, um, this adds a bit of color and a bit of flavor when it comes to just coloring in those moments. And I always like to take a moment far more than I did before installing the mod just to take a gander at the various additions they add when it comes to filling in the details where black and white and yellow to an extent could not.
I'm saving the best for last because I think this mod pack, and it's a mod pack because it's not just one mod, I think can satiate the UI implementations and revisions that Civ 6 requires. Um, the mod packs by WITK or WITK, as I'll refer to him by, are absolutely essential when it comes to revamping your Civ 6 experience. Things like the extended policy cards, things like the improved UI map packs, they are all wonderful. Um, any of his mods are a fantastic addition to Civ 6. And I just want to talk about them briefly. I want to talk about them one by one, covering each mod individually, because while they are at a glance quite simple, the amount of, I think, extra planning that they give you since Civ 6 is first and foremost a city builder, in my opinion, is monumental. Uh, detailed map tax specifically is a great addition when it comes to charting down and keeping track of those different district placements that you wanted to keep. But something like a strategic resource interrupted you. Um, for which I would install the strategic resource removal mod. Um, but in terms of early planning and charting out your districts, if you like to keep that in track and just keep a pace on things for when you decide to plop down that campus, plop down that holy site, um, it's great for planning. It's really great for planning out text and inspirations and eurekas. And above all else, it is just a great addition for players that are just trying out the new expansions and don't have too much experience with Civ 6 to really get their training wheels on to help even as an experienced player, I found this mod extremely useful in just planning, again, out those map tax, adding on a new dimension to city planning with things like dams with adjacency bonuses. And overall, it just keeps the gameplay systems down, um, easy for you to memorize without having to go to the Civ dictionary or the encyclopedia and keep memorizing different adjacency bonuses and where you want to place your certain districts. So it's incredibly helpful in that regard, and I heavily recommend checking out the detailed map tax mod um, from WITK. Another great add-on by WITK is the quick deals mod. It is fantastic. I think it's even better than the detailed map tax because it has several different fields that it tackles. For example, AI relations in general with Civ 6 require you going to the individual leaders um, tracking them down, looking at their resources, their luxuries, and seeing what you want to manage, what they're willing to trade. It takes a lot out of your immersion while playing Civ 6. For example, if you like mauling the enemy, having to open up a trade deal with someone like uh, Ludwig II and seeing which luxuries he likes and doesn't like and trying to understand his supply chain is a lot for newer players and even more experienced players, I think, don't like having to do that. Quick Deals just makes things so much easier. Um, you have your own little UI, you have the different luxuries that they're willing to trade available, and it furthermore gives you the best deals. Um, it's basically bartering for you, and for that, I am eternally grateful. I think it is just such a useful, useful resource um, that really just changes the game when it comes to, one, getting the most gold or bang for your buck, and two, um, keeping a track when it comes to uh, even gameplay modes like monopolies and corporations. When it comes to that, it just frees up much more of your time to enjoy the base Civ game experience. And I think a lot of these mods in general do that, but I've just found this being such a useful and relevant mod when it comes to, again, enhancing that core Civ gameplay experience. Now, I screwed up earlier. This mod is actually made by Aristos, but it is still very, very impactful. It is the extended policy card mod. And what it does is simple, similar to the map tax mod, but it is still relevant all the same. Um, what it does is it displays the yields that are generated, for example, by the double adjacency cards for campuses or holy sites, or even the plus one production card that you start with at the very beginning of the game in the ancient era. So regardless of what time you are in, in Civ, I think this helps your gameplay journey, your experience with wh whatever empire you play. It is a broadly applicable mod. Um, when it comes to displaying UI yields um, and helping players just not need to memorize. I think that's the takeaway from some of the most relevant mods, um, the various adjacency bonuses, the various policy cards. So if you need help um, with getting down those policy cards, with remembering things, um, this is incredibly, incredibly useful. I've seen all of the um, top Civ 6 players have this mod installed. Um, it is very, very useful, and I cannot go without it after having played with it for two plus years. So um, again, if you love this mod, um, or if you just love, I should say, um, UI improvement mods in general, this is a must have. It really helps um, keep your attention away from policy cards so much and so that you don't need to dedicate as much time um, to playing around with them. So 
a must have mod if you are playing a more intensive Civ 6 experience and you need to have those down like that. So um, with the policy cards, can't recommend it more. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I hope this has been, I know it's been a bit informal, but I hope it's been a relevant um, mod, I guess, tier list, so to say, um, and a mod ranking. Um, so thank you guys again so much for watching. I hope you found this useful. And if you did, um, please let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, this has been 4 Extraordinaire, and I hope to see you guys later. All right, peace.